Hello everyone, welcome back to the workshop and today I want to show you a tool that you can use to make some custom boxes and fixtures using an online tool that will allow you to make some um, customized designs without knowing CAD and developing it yourself. So if that's something that interests you, stay tuned, we're going to jump right into it. So the laser can be a very useful device and when starting out it's great to be able to have some ready-made files but pretty soon you want to start kind of customizing things and designing them yourself. Well that can be a big leap jumping into CAD or some design tools. Um, so I want to point out one that's very useful that's online resource that can help you create some boxes and some different jigs and uh, help you get to creating more maybe making your space a little more organized and uh, without having to learn a whole lot. So let's jump into that program real quick. It's online and we'll see how that works. All right, so this is the tool that I want to show you today. And this is boxes.py. As you see, it is an open source box generator written in Python. And so what it does is it gives you kind of some default shapes and boxes and shelving type things. There's a whole bunch of them that you can look through here and when you click into them so if we click in the boxes you can see here that they have quite a few different styles of kind of pre-made boxes that you can jump through and pick one that even have other miscellaneous parts and such they have a, a gear type thing and so lots of things to play with here and what's really cool about this is that when you pick your actual box then you can actually go in and customize it. So if we just want this simple box to start with, we can click into here and then it's going to have all these settings that we can play around with. And so here's where you get to do your customization. Now, um, first off, you're going to want to know the size of it. And that's what it's asking here. And this is in millimeters. So you're going to want to have a conversion if you're used to working in inches. But uh, here you can set your size and then that can be whether that's the inside size or the outside size. So it's either, you know, what's the interior size of the box or the overall outside dimensions. Um, they do have uh, some other options as far as your bottom edge. Is that going to be uh, finger jointed, uh, parallel, stackable? So they have a few different options there. But another thing you're going to want to worry about then, of course, is the thickness. Now this is going to be your material. So for example, I have some of this material that I picked up from Lowe's. I'm doing this as a test to try to find, you know, some common material that is available uh, more readily in uh, like big box stores and not so much your specialty hardwood stores. So I picked this up the other day and we would want to find the thickness of this. So this is where having a digital caliper is going to be very handy. And we would just measure this and we would read that it's about 4.7 4.69, 4.7 uh, millimeters thick. And so that's one thing we would want to set in here. So we would go 4.7. And then what we can do is mess around with a few of these other things in format, which is going to be important. Now, if you're working in Lightburn, it's going to be able to accept an AI file, a DXF file. You can even export it straight to a Lightburn file. Um, but if you want to see a preview of it before you commit to it, you can definitely leave that on SVG or Scaled Vector Graphics. And once you set up all of your options here, you hit Generate. That's going to open up a whole other window here, and it is going to give you a little preview of what this box is going to look like. So you see over here we have the cutouts. This is your bottom piece, and these are your side pieces. And here's your finger joints that are going to fit together. And then these blue areas are where these finger joints are going to fit into these slots. Now one thing we didn't cover is they also have this thing called burn and what that is if you watched one of my previous videos it's going to be your kerf offset and so that's going to be a number you can adjust to get a tighter or looser fit depending on how much you put in there so if you're not sure how to figure that out i have a video called finding your kerf and so go ahead and watch that you can run it through your material and find out what your kerf is for this to get an exacting fit and then you can play with adjusting it from there so once we have all of this done and we are happy with it, we can do the generate. Now I'm going to actually switch this from SVG to DXF just because I like to work in that. We'll generate it. It's going to automatically save a file for me here and then we can open up Lightburn. And then in Lightburn, we can just simply import what we created on there 
and here you see it has the parts readily made out for us. Now we do need to tweak some settings here because it's just kind of taking a guess at here. Uh, I do not need this extra bit down here, so this is just saying the size of it and then the burn offset. Uh, it's more of reference material and we don't need that as well. Um, but then we have our outer line set up, but the inner line is set in a different color and that is set to be a fill. And really what we can do is just change these to the same layer. They can be a cut as well. So we would switch these over like so. And then we would want to double check to make sure that our settings are correct. Now for this one, I've been playing around with this material and we're doing this on the Xtool 20 Watt Pro. And in my tests, um, you can tell that it does want to cut things a little bit faster, but I've been finding that if I really try to push it up in these 500 to 600 millimeters a minute range, um, the material isn't consistent enough. So I'm gonna back it off to 400. We'll leave it at 100% power, okay. And our preview shows it's gonna take roughly seven minutes to cut all these parts out. So what I'm gonna go do is I'm gonna go ahead and send this off to the laser. We'll cut it out and then we'll take a look at the parts and see how they fit. All right, so as you can see, we were able to make this box. It is roughly four inches square, 100 millimeters cubed. Uh, and uh, the fit with that offset um, was actually pretty much spot on. Went together fairly easy. It didn't, uh, I didn't have to press too hard. And they're tight enough that I can't, I mean, I could pull it apart if I needed to. And there's a little bit of wiggle that you can kind of see there. Um, so, you know, just adding a little bit of wood glue into these joints, putting it together, and it's going to glue together easily and be fit. Um, but that's just a basic box. Let's see what else is on that site that we can make that's maybe a little more complex. All right, we are back on the website and back on the main page. So we're going to jump back into boxes and let's just look through here. They've got a few different things. Um, they kind of start from complex and, or simple and go down to more complex. Um, like there's a dice box if you wanted to play around with that for some of the uh, tabletop gaming people But I think what I saw down here. Here we go Sliding drawer. So this will be like having a tray that goes into a box and this can be really handy for You know organizational items such as on your desk So we're gonna jump into this one again and again, we're gonna play with these settings so if we want to make this we first off I'm going to set my thickness to what we had before that was 4.7 we're gonna leave our burn the same and uh, let's see here so this is talking about outside measurements and this is going to be the overall drawer so this is a millimeter so I'm gonna bump this up I want this to be let's see this is the width so let's make that about 75 wide and I'm going to make it twice as deep. So I'm going to go 150 deep and the height. Let's go ahead and make this about, oh, let's say 50 because we wanted about two inches uh, tall as well. So once again, we can look at it. If we want to generate the SVG, it'll pop up in a new window and you'll see here there's a few extra parts with this one. So we've got an inner bar, in, in box wall, which would be the inner box, and then out box bottom top wall, and those are gonna be our outer ones. So uh, again, those all the parts look good. I'm gonna go ahead and have this, let's just double check, zero tabs. Now if you wanted to stay in the sheets, you could add tabs to it as well. 
And if we wanted a tighter fit, we could adjust with this number. That's going to be the difference between the inside and the outside box. But we'll stick with their default settings. I've found on most of their things, their defaults pretty work pretty well. So the primary thing I'm adjusting is their sides. So let's go ahead and I'm going to change this to DXF. We're going to generate that and it will create our DXF. We're going to come back into Lightburn, create a new file. I don't need to save that one and we'll go ahead and import our sliding drawer. So now here, what you might need to do is you might need to break this into different cut files or move these around based on your material size. So I'm gonna get that set up really quick and then we'll send it off to the laser. So stay tuned. All right, and so there now we have a, uh, a tray and a box that it can slide into. So you could make a series of these, put them together and have little parts bins and such. Now, here's one thing where, you know, this to me is too tight. And this is where the nice thing comes in. You've got the base. You could easily just go into the file, make this a little bit bigger and uh, make it easier to get your finger in there so that you can actually slide it out. And so, as a matter of fact, I actually took this design, stretched out even larger, made an even bigger one that's wider. And as you can see, finger fits in there just fine. So some of it's trial and error, but that's the beauty of this tool. You can use it to kind of get a feel for how things get designed and get a feel for, you know, a simple box or a simple tray, and then you can take it and modify it. Maybe you want to have just a round finger hole that slides out of here, and maybe you want to engrave something on here. Maybe you want to combine a few of these together. Um, this at least kind of shows you the basics of how to build the foundation of it, and then take that design and start modifying it. So I hope this is uh, helpful to you to start playing with your laser to make some other things um, and have a little bit of flexibility without completely uh, learning to design on your own. So that's just another great tool to have in your arsenal. I hope you can use it to be creative yourself. I want to thank you for stopping by and watching this video. I hope you found it uh, informative and if you have any questions go ahead and leave those down below. I do try to get back to those quite often. If you like what you saw here uh, definitely hit that like button and consider subscribing. I do mix in a lot of equipment reviews with a lot of educational how-to tips and tricks as well. So if uh, you want to find out more what's going on in my shop, maybe learn a little more about lasers and other workshop type things, I'd always appreciate your subscription. I'll have links down below to this tool as well as some other things that are in my shop. Some of them will be affiliate links and uh, those do go to help support me, but as always, no pressure. And if you want even more support and fun, uh, check out on Sunday nights. I do a live stream with my friend from the Clock Shack. We get together and answer questions uh, from the audience. We uh, share what's going on in our workshops and sometimes we just talk about the weather, about down south as first versus up north as well. So uh, if that sounds like fun to you, you want to check that out, maybe hop on, ask up some questions. Uh, there will be links to that in my channel as well. So go ahead and find those and look forward to seeing you on Sunday evenings. It's going to wrap it up for this video. Again, once again, thank you for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed it 
and I hope you get out into your workshop and can make something too. We'll catch you next time.